This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Russ McMeekin. He is the president and CEO of MCloud Technologies. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, MCLD on the TSX Venture and MCLDF on the OTCQB. And Russ, on behalf of MCloud, will be presenting at our upcoming event, the SNN Network Canada virtual event taking place January 6th and 7th, 2021. You can go and register to hear the mCloud presentation or book a one-on-one uh, at canada.snn.network. With that, Russ, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Very good. Yourself, Robert? Nice good. picture I, in the background. <laughs> thank you. I, I was going to say, thank you for bearing with me through that intro. You know, they're getting longer and longer every day here. So I, I appreciate you taking the time today. Great. No problem. Very good. All right. So this is actually our first time doing a video interview together. So I, I'd love to start off with a, a quick overview and history of the company, and then we'll go from there. Okay. The company was publicly listed three years ago, but we started only months prior to becoming public. We acquired our first company privately. Uh, myself and my partners, we've been working in the software and deep analytics space for three decades. Uh, our first uh, exit and uh, joining was Honeywell in the late 90s, I became the president of the advanced software group at Honeywell. So we've been working with deep analytics around assets for a number of decades. And our vision here with mCloud was to make analytics, AI, and uh, the ability to optimize assets mass market, meaning where there's many of assets versus the markets we used to serve, which were the very, very large assets. And we call them the privileged assets. So an aircraft is a privileged as asset an oil refinery is a privileged asset. So they're very large, very capital intensive. Where we focus today is on many, many assets and we don't sell software, we sell results as a service. So from the cloud, it's a subscription model. Behind it has you know, very complex technology. Uh, some of it comes from aerospace, some of it comes from the defense industry, some of it comes from nuclear, but the application of it is purely a result. So if you have a, a rooftop unit, we drive kilowatt hour reduction. So at a certain time of day when rates are high and you want to curtail the use of electricity, AI kicks in and reduces kilowatt hour usage. We have many thousands of buildings connected, tens of thousands of buildings connected using that technology. The same technology is used with wind turbines. At certain times of day, there's various optimization functions. We take it one step further. We do blade inspection using AI with visual analytics. Drones fly, take photos. We use it use the AI to interpret to see if there's damage and blemishes on the blades. And then last but not least, we apply the same technology in midstream oil and gas. So in Alberta, we have many assets connected to the cloud uh, that we um, provide on a results of a service basis. Those are assets like compressors, heat exchangers, uh, pumps, you name it. And there's tens of millions of these assets around the world. So each one of them represents a monthly subscription. So we charge a monthly subscription fee. Uh, each asset sees instantaneous gratification, meaning you can see pretty much in real time the benefit it creates. The monthly fee is usually significantly less than the value it creates on a monthly basis. So it's really not an ROI play, i.e. a capital investment with a three-year payback. It's a subscription with that same period you see a return. That's the big background of the company. Very good. So, so then what would you say makes mCloud unique and different compared to your peers out there? One is the subscription model, especially right now. Uh, you know, we came into this year like every other company with call it budgeted plans from customers and then COVID hit and everyone had to scramble, cut budgets. Our subscription model basically is an operating expense. So subscription is uh, as much easier for customers to acquire, to, to be able to procure from us. The other is we don't sell hardware. We don't sell equipment. Often there's just off the shelf sensors, IOT. So the other thing is our upfront investment and effort, let alone cost is quite simple to get assets on board. Today, a wind turbine could be you know, remotely connected pretty easily, a oil and gas facility. During COVID, you couldn't go many places. We, we were able to do things in Malaysia from Alberta, you know, so uh, doing things remotely. So everything's from the cloud. So we're all cloud, we're fully a cloud provider. Everything we do is remote, can be remote. And so our differentiation is in our business model and the fact that we're all cloud with but still the same technology, as I said, every nuclear power plant in the United States uses our technology. So it's not that we're using the cloud for, call it light, light industrial here. This is some serious stuff that we use our technology for, but our business model is remote from the cloud and, and uh, that's how we do our business. 
And you mentioned at the beginning of this interview a little bit about your background, how you've been kind of in the deep analytics space for three decades. You know, tell us a little bit about that prior to founding mCloud. Yeah, so first foray, I was the president of Honeywell Software Group after being acquired in Honeywell. I started in Honeywell after uh, joining them or after being acquired into them in Asia, actually, in the early 90s. So before WTO, I was in Singapore. I helped set up the China Software Center, the India Software Center, the Singapore Software Center. So I moved up the ranks pretty quickly in Honeywell. Uh, when I became president of uh, the advanced software group, we were less than 30 million revenue worldwide. Uh, by the time I was done and moved on to Silicon Valley, we were over 350 million worldwide. So we grew quite quickly in about four and a half years. I uh, spent about a decade in Silicon Valley, a uh, couple of companies that were exited, acquired, one's now owned by SAP. Um, and then the last one before mCloud was acquired by, from the Silicon Valley that we created was acquired by Yokogawa Electric. Yokogawa is very similar to uh, Honeywell, uh, but it's very centric around Japan. And so we stayed for a period of time after we sold the company, but again, exactly the same business, just different companies. And so now we're, uh, you know, publicly listed standalone company doing very similar things. Yeah. Good. Well, and with that, from what you can tell us, what would you say are some of the company's value catalysts now going into 2021? So from a value point of view is connected assets. So we have just under 60,000 connected assets now. We should have been at 70,000 connected assets by now. Uh, COVID was a bit of a headwind, but now we're seeing a tailwind from it because a lot of buildings getting back to work. We have IoT that uses indoor air quality sensors. So now we can you know, measure or use the sensors that measure and then we can interpret and, and create records for indoor air quality. So how we track our company is very simple. Look at the number of connected assets. You'll see revenue or the recurring revenue growth. And if you look at recently, there's been an IPO in the US, uh, C3 AI, which is a very similar company to ours. It started when I was in the Silicon Valley in the mid 2000s. It's now 150 million of revenue. You know, they've had a decade of head start on us. So we need to play catch up. But our business model and our markets are very similar to C3 AI. They're 150 million revenue with 15 billion market cap. So that's the kind of <laughs> that's the kind of value drivers you can be looking at. Yep. And Russ, with that, where can my audience go and find everything they need to know to follow along the mCloud story? Yeah, so at mcloudcorp.com, we have a very uh, data-rich uh, section in the investor relations section. You can sign up. We have videos. We have a lot of things. We keep evolving the website, but if you go to the investor relations section, you'll see a significant amount of information and videos and things of that nature. Um, we're pretty well published in this sector. Sector. All right, Russ, we're there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck, stay safe. And we're really excited to have mCloud participate in our upcoming SNN Network Canada virtual event. Again, January 6th to 7th, 2021. Go register canada.snn.network. Russ, thank you so much and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, Robert.